Chapter One. My first home. I live in a big meadow with a pond and trees around it. During the day, I run in the meadow with my mother, and at night, I sleep next to her. There are six other colts in the meadow. I run with them too and have great fun. But sometimes they kick and bite me. My mother always says, "These colts are good, but they're not polite. You come from a family of famous horses. You must always be good and gentle, and never bite or kick." My mother's name is Duchess, and she is old and wise. She is our master's favorite horse. And she always takes him to town in a small carriage. Our master is a kind man. He gives us a lot of oats, a big carrot, and a warm place to live. He always says nice things to us. Sometimes he gives us some sugar. We all love him. One day, I see a lot of dogs. Running in another green meadow, and they are barking loudly. What's happening, mother? I ask. The dogs are running after a hare. She says. There is a hunt. The dogs run fast, and the hare does too. There is a lot of noise. Finally, the dogs catch the poor hare and kill it. Then. Another sad thing happens. Two horses and two men fall to the ground. One man gets up, but the other does not. The dogs are silent now, and everyone is looking at the man and the two horses. It's young George Gordon, the landowner's son, says Mother sadly. The poor young man is dead. Only one horse gets up, but the other cannot because his leg is broken. Someone runs to the master's house and gets a gun. There is a loud shot, and the horse is dead. I am four years old now, and I am a handsome colt. I have a nice black coat and a white star on my forehead. One day, the landowner, Mr. Gordon, comes to look at me. He looks at my eyes, my teeth, and my legs. When you break him in, I want to see him," says Mr. Gordon. "Very well, Mr. Gordon," says my master. He smiles at me and says, "Tomorrow, I must break you in." I must teach you to wear a saddle, and bridle, and carry a person on your back. Then, I must teach you to pull a carriage. Tomorrow is an important day," says Mother quietly. "Remember, you must always listen to your master, and never bite or kick." And you must never jump when you're happy, or stop when you're tired. Always be a good horse. The next day, my master comes and talks to me quietly. Then he gently puts the bit into my mouth and the bridle on my face. The bit hurts my mouth and feels terrible, but my mother. And other adult horses wear it too. Then my master puts a saddle on my back and says kind words to me. He slowly gets on the saddle and rides me around the meadow. I am happy when I carry him. After some time, he takes me to the blacksmith. The blacksmith puts on horseshoes. They are very heavy metal shoes, and I do not like them. Today, 
We're going to visit my friend Simon, my master says. At Simon's house, I stay in a meadow with cows and sheep. Suddenly, a big train goes by, and it makes a lot of noise and smoke. I run to the other side of the meadow because I am afraid. But the cows and sheep do not move. A lot of trains go by, but they do not hurt me, so I am not afraid of them. Sometimes I pull the carriage with my mother, and she teaches me a lot of things. There are many kinds of masters, she says. Some are good. But others are bad and cruel. You must always listen to them, and remember the good name of your family. In May, one of Mr. Gordon's men comes and takes me away. My master says, "Goodbye, my friend. Be a good horse, and always do your best." I cannot say goodbye. So I put my nose in his hand. My new home at Mr. Gordon's is lovely. There is a big stable, and I have a comfortable stall. There is another horse in the next stall. Hello, what's your name? I ask. My name is Merrylegs, says the horse. I carry the young ladies on my back. Are you my new neighbour? Yes, I am. Do you bite? asks Merrylegs. No, I don't. I answer. I only bite grass. Oh, good, because the horse in the other stall sometimes bites, says Merrylegs. She's a brown horse. And her name is Ginger. Chapter Two, The Bridge. My coachman's name is John Manley, and he lives near the stables. John is a friendly man, and he always gives me a good grooming. He is a good rider too. Good morning, John. Says Mr. Gordon, "How's the new horse?" "He's fast and easy to ride, sir." Says John, "He comes from a good family." "What's his name?" asks Mr. Gordon. "I don't know, sir." Says John. "Well, he's a beauty," says Mr. Gordon. "Let's call him Black Beauty." I like my new name. And my new master. After a few days, John says to me, "Today you're going out in a carriage with Ginger." I am not happy about this because Ginger is not friendly. But after a few rides in the carriage, we start talking. Sometimes I bite and kick, but I'm not a bad horse," says Ginger sadly. In my life, I can only remember cruel masters, bad coachmen, and the whip. Oh, I'm sorry, Ginger. I say, are you happy here? Yes, I am. Says Ginger. Because the master and the coachman are both kind. They understand horses. Now we are good friends. And I like her a lot. I also like Merrylegs, because he is always happy and friendly. He is the favourite horse of Miss Jessie and Flora. They are Mr. Gordon's daughters. One cloudy autumn day, the master says, "John, get the carriage ready with Black Beauty. We must go to town on business." This is the first time for me to go to town with the master and John. I am excited. I want to do my best and please the master. 
The master and John are in the carriage, and it starts raining, and it is very windy. We get to town, and the master goes to see some people. John and I wait for him in the rain. When he finishes his business, he says, "Let's go home, John. Perhaps we can cross the bridge before it is dark." It's a dangerous bridge when it rains," says John. We take the country road to the bridge, and it is raining hard. I am very careful because the road is bad. When my feet touch the bridge, I know something is wrong. I cannot move, and I stop. Go on, Black Beauty," says my master. I cannot move, because I feel there is danger on the bridge. There's something wrong, sir," says John. Beauty doesn't want to cross the bridge, but we must cross the bridge. It's late," says the master. At that moment, a man runs out of his house and cries, "Stop! Stop! Go back! Don't cross the bridge!" It's broken in the middle. Broken in the middle," says the master. "Oh, thank you, Black Beauty." "Yes, thank you, Beauty," says John. We take another country road and get home late. "What a rainy night," says the mistress when she sees us. "I'm happy you're home." "You can thank Black Beauty." He's a very wise horse," says the master. That night, John dries my wet coat and puts on my warm blue blanket. Then he gives me a good dinner, and I can finally sleep. The next day, a new stable boy comes to work. His name is Joe Green, and he is fourteen years old. I like him because he has a gentle hand, and he talks to me. One night, the stable bell rings loudly, and all the horses wake up. I hear John's voice. Beauty, wake up! The mistress is very ill, and we must go and find Doctor White. He puts a saddle on my back and gets on. I gallop fast. Because I want to help the mistress, it is a dark, cold night. When we get to Doctor White's house, John calls him. A window opens, and the doctor puts his head out and says, "What's the matter at three o'clock in the morning?" Mrs. Gordon is very ill," says John. "Please come at once." Can I use your horse? asks the doctor. My horse has a bad leg. Yes, of course, says John. The doctor is a heavy man, and not a good rider. But I do my best and gallop home. He runs to see the mistress, and Joe takes me to the stable. I am very wet and cold. Joe dries me and gives me some water and oats, but he forgets to put my warm blue blanket on. Soon, I start shaking, and I am very cold. I feel terrible. The next day, the master comes to see me. Thanks to you, Black Beauty, the mistress is feeling better, he says. But now you are ill, my poor beauty. We must call the vet at once. I am very ill now, but the master's kind words make me feel better. Chapter Three. Lord and Lady Wadsworth. My life at Mister Gordon's is happy. But things are changing. 
the mistress is ill, and the master is sad and worried. Doctor White comes here often and says, "Mrs. Gordon must go to a warm country for two or three years, then perhaps she can get better." Everyone is sad because we must soon say goodbye. One day. Jessie and Flora come to the stable. Goodbye, dear Merrylegs. They say. Thank you for all the wonderful rides. They hug him like an old friend. Don't be sad, Merrylegs. Says Jessie. Father is selling you to the old vicar. He is a kind man and loves horses. Then the master comes to the stable, and talks to Ginger and me. I'm selling you to Lord Wadsworth. He's a good man, and lives in the country. Goodbye, Black Beauty and Ginger. He pats us on the neck for a long time. I cannot say goodbye, so I put my nose in his hand. Ginger and I. Are very sad to leave our master and our stable, but this is the life of a horse. Lord Wadsworth has a beautiful house with a green meadow and big stables. John and our new coachman, Mister York, take us to our stalls. He looks at us carefully and says, "They look like very good horses, Mister Manley." What can you tell me about them? Black Beauty is gentle and wise, and always does his best," says John. He is also very fast. Ginger's a good horse too, but sometimes she's nervous. Do they wear the bearing rein? asks Mister York. No, they don't," says John. Well," says Mister York. Here they must wear it. The Lord and I like a soft rein, but Lady Wadsworth wants the bearing rein. The horses must keep their heads high. Horses don't like it," says John. "It's very uncomfortable, and it hurts their head and neck." "You're right," says Mister York. "But the lady isn't kind." I do not know what a bearing rein is, but it sounds terrible. The next day, Ginger and I pull the lady's carriage, and we must wear it. It is very uncomfortable, because we cannot put our heads down. It is a cruel thing for a horse. I hate the bearing rein," says Ginger one evening. "My head." Neck and mouth hurt terribly. People don't wear it, so they can't understand. I hate it too, I say. But what can a poor horse do? We can do nothing, Beauty," says Ginger sadly. We wear the bearing rein every day. The lady comes down the stairs in a beautiful dress. And says, "York, take me to the Duchess of Barstow, and I want the horses' heads high, very high." She gets into the carriage and sits down. York prepares Ginger and me. He comes to me first and pulls the bearing rein. It feels terrible. Then he goes to Ginger and does the same. Ginger gets angry and starts kicking wildly. York falls to the ground, and the lady in the carriage screams. Two grooms come from the stable and take poor Ginger away. She does not ride with me any more. The master uses her for the hunts because she is fast. My new carriage partner is Max, a quiet. Grey horse. I think about my old home a lot. Here I have food and a clean stall, 
but I don't have a lot of friends. York is a good man, but he is not my friend. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals In the 1800s, animals are often mistreated by cruel owners, and no one protects them. In 1824, Richard Martin opens the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals in London. It is the first national animal protection society in the world. In 1840, Queen Victoria gives her permission to call it the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the RSPCA. People begin to understand that animals are living creatures and it is wrong to mistreat them. Today, the RSPCA is an important organization with more than 400 inspectors. They visit homes, pet shops, farms and laboratories. They work with schools to teach kindness towards animals. They also work with the government to pass laws that protect animals. The RSPCA has animal hospitals and centres for abandoned animals all over England and Wales. Chapter 4 Lizzie Lady Anne is a friend of Lord Wadsworth's family. She is young and beautiful and a perfect rider. I am her favourite horse, and I like carrying her. She is kind to me, and always brings me a carrot. She often rides with her friend, Lord Robert. He is a handsome young man with dark hair. He likes horses, and often talks to me. He rides Lizzie, a young, nervous horse. What a lovely spring day, says Lord Robert. Let's go riding, Lady Anne. All right, she says. But I want to ride your horse today. Lizzie's a good horse, but she's too nervous for a lady, says Lord Robert. What nonsense, says Lady Anne. Today I'm riding Lizzie, and you're riding Black Beauty. Lord Robert is a good rider, but I prefer Lady Anne because she is small and light. We gallop across the meadows and woods and have a wonderful time. Then we stop at Dr. Ashley's house. I must give a letter to the doctor, says Lord Robert. Lizzie and I can wait here with Black Beauty, says Lady Anne. After a few minutes, some colts run by. Lizzie is nervous and she starts kicking. Lady Anne is afraid and suddenly Lizzie gallops away. I know Lizzie is dangerous, so I neigh loudly and Lord Robert hears me. He runs to me and jumps on my back. Let's go, Beauty, he cries. We must help Lady Anne. We follow Lizzie and Lady Anne. I gallop quickly because I want to help my mistress. Lizzie gallops up a hill and down into a valley. Lady Anne's green hat falls off and her long brown hair flies in the wind. Then Lizzie jumps across a small river and Lady Anne falls off. Oh no! cries Lord Robert. I jump across the river and see my poor mistress on the grass. Her face is white and her eyes are shut. She does not move or speak. Is she dead? Lady Anne, can you hear me? asks Lord Robert. But she does not answer. A young farmer is walking by and says, 
Poor lady, can I help her? Yes, says Lord Robert. Please go to the village and come back with the doctor. You can ride my horse, Beauty. He's very fast. The farmer gets on my back and I gallop to the village. He finds a doctor and we return to Lady Anne. She is still on the grass, and the doctor examines her carefully. Don't worry, she's not dead, he says. But we must take her home right now, and she must rest. I feel happy when I hear this, because I like my young mistress. That evening, in the stable, Ginger and I talk about Lizzie. Two days later, Lord Robert comes to my stall and says, "Lady Anne is better now, and she wants to ride you soon. You are an intelligent horse, Beauty, because you understand a lot of things." Chapter Five, Reuben Smith. When Mister York goes to London, Reuben Smith becomes the coachman. He is a good, honest man, and he understands horses. But he has one big problem: he drinks a lot, and he is often drunk. One morning, he comes to my stall and says, "We're going to town on business, Beauty." He puts my saddle on. And we go. When we arrive in town, Smith leaves me at a stable. My horse is hungry and thirsty, says Smith to the stable boy. I'm coming back at four o'clock. The boy gives me oats and water, and looks at my horseshoes too. The nails in your front shoe are loose, he says to me. You can't run with loose nails. I must tell Mister Smith. But Smith does not come at four o'clock, and he does not come at five o'clock. The boy is worried, and I am too. At nine o'clock in the evening, Smith comes back. He is angry, and his voice is loud. He cannot walk well. The front shoe of your horse has loose nails, sir. Says the boy, "It's dangerous to ride a horse with loose nails." Smith looks at him and shouts, "It's late. I'm going home." It is a dark night, and the moon is behind the clouds. Come on, Beauty, gallop! He cries, and hits me with his whip. I gallop fast, but my front shoe is loose. I feel the whip again. Gallop, beauty! cries Smith again. At the bridge, my front shoe falls off. My foot hurts a lot. There are a lot of sharp stones on the road. I try to gallop, but I can't. At last, I fall heavily on my knees, and Smith falls off. I get up slowly and look at Smith. He is not moving. What can I do? Soon I hear Ginger coming. I neigh loudly, and she answers. Then I hear men's voices, and they stop in front of Smith. It's Reuben, says one man. He's dead. Dead, says another man. Yes, says the first man sadly. Poor Reuben Smith, look at his head. Then the man looks at me. Look at this poor horse. It's Black Beauty. His knees are badly hurt. The men slowly take me back to the stable, but I cannot sleep. The next day, the vet and the blacksmith come to see me. This horse must rest for a few months," says the vet. So now I stay in the green meadow with its sweet grass, 
But I am worried about the future, because my knees are not perfect. After a month, Ginger comes to the meadow too, because she is very tired. I like talking to my old friend under the apple tree. One summer day, Lord Wadsworth and York come to the meadow. They look at my knees. I'm sorry, York, but I must sell Black Beauty," says the Lord. "His knees are not perfect any more. I can't keep a horse with those knees in my stables. I'm very sorry because I like Beauty. He's a wonderful horse, but his knees. When they go away, Ginger says sadly, "You're the only friend I've got." And soon you must leave. What a difficult life! I look at her and say, "Ginger, you're my true friend." The Lord sells me to the town livery stables. It is not a nice place. Anyone can hire a horse and carriage at the livery stables. Most of the drivers are bad. And know nothing about horses, and of course they know nothing about driving a carriage. They make a lot of mistakes and then get angry with the horse and use the whip. In the evening, I cannot talk about my day because I do not know the other horses. I am very lonely, and think about Ginger. Listening activity. Good morning. Is this Jones's stables? Yes, sir. Can I help you? I'm in town on business today. Can I leave my horse here? Yes, of course. What time do you close? We close at ten p.m. Good. I'm coming back at four p.m. My horse is hungry and thirsty. How much do oats and water cost? Four pence, sir. I want to buy some new reins too. We have brown and black reins. Good. I want two black reins. Do you sell blankets too? No, we don't, sir. Where can I buy a blanket for my horse? At Mister Smith's shop. Near the town inn. Where's the town inn? It's behind the church. Thank you. Chapter six: A London cab horse. After a year at the livery stables, the master takes me to a horse fair. He wants to sell me. A horse fair is an interesting place. Some of the horses at the fair are young and handsome, but most of them are old and tired. Their eyes are sad, and they are thin and hungry. I am still a strong horse, but my knees are not perfect any more. People come to look at me, and they like me, but when they see my knees, they go away. At the end of the day. A tall, thin man comes and looks at me. Then he talks to my master. I'm looking for a gentle horse, he says. I want to ride him in the fresh air every morning. This black horse is perfect, says my master. He's very gentle. My new master is Mister Barry, and he lives in Bath. He knows nothing about horses, but he is a kind man. He buys a lot of food, but the stable boy steals it and takes it home. He is dishonest and lazy. He never cleans my feet or my stall. Mister Barry knows nothing about this. One day, Mister Barry's friend says, "Your horse is very thin." What's the matter with him? I don't know," says Mister Barry. "I always buy a lot of food for him." 
Go and see what's happening in the stable," says his friend. My master discovers that the stable boy steals my food, and my stall is very dirty. He is angry and calls the police. They take the stable boy to prison for two months. Then, Mr. Barry comes to my stall and looks at me sadly. "I'm sorry, Beauty," he says. "I must sell you at the next horse fair. I'm not lucky with horses." I am sorry too, because I do not like changing masters. At the next horse fair, a short man with kind grey eyes comes to look at me. He pats my neck gently and smiles. I like this horse, he says to the man. I can pay twenty-four pounds for him. Very well, the horse is yours, says the man. My new master is a cab driver and lives in London. His name is Jerry Barker, and his wife's name is Polly. They have got two children, Dolly and Harry. They are a very happy family, and they like me. Captain is Jerry's other horse. He is a big white horse, and he seems friendly. Our cab stand. Is in the centre of London, and there are many horses. Jerry is an excellent driver, and he never uses the whip or the bearing rein. Our stable is clean, and we are never hungry. I am lucky to have a kind master. Sunday is the best day because I can rest all day and talk to Captain. He is an old military horse, and tells me exciting stories about different wars. The life of a cab horse is difficult. London is a big city with a lot of noise, people, carriages, and cabs. The weather is often wet and cold. At the end of the day, I am very tired, and my knees hurt. Captain has the same problem. In the winter, Dolly often brings her father a hot lunch. He eats it at the cab stand. Jerry's life is difficult too. One day, our cab is waiting outside a park. Another cab stops next to us. An old, tired brown horse is pulling the cab. The poor horse. Has a long, thin neck, and her eyes are almost shut. I can see her bones through her dirty coat. She looks at me with her sad eyes and says, "Is that you, Black Beauty?" Ginger, my old friend, I answer. Yes, it's me, Black Beauty. It's. Good to see you," says Ginger. "I feel terrible. I am old, weak, hungry, and ill. I can't run or gallop any more. I must pull this heavy cab for my cruel master, and I eat very little. I work all week and never have a day of rest." Every bone in my old body hurts. How terrible! I put my nose near hers. Dear Ginger, I'm very sorry. A week later, I see a cart with a dead horse in it. It is Ginger. I feel very sad when I see her body in the cart. Why are people cruel to animals? They do not understand us. We only want some love and kindness. Horses. Horses are beautiful animals. They are intelligent and friendly, and. They learn quickly too. 
Their favourite foods are oats, carrots, and apples. They do not eat meat. Horses love conversation. You can talk to a horse, and he listens to you happily. There are three types of horses: light, heavy, and ponies. Each kind of horse has a lot of breeds. Breeds are groups of horses with different colors and sizes. One. Light horses. They have small bones and thin legs, and they weigh about six hundred and fifty kilograms. Saddle horses are light horses. People use them for riding. Some important breeds of saddle horses are thoroughbred horses. American saddle horses, and Arabian stallions. Quarter horses. They are fast, strong, and intelligent. They work well with other animals. The Pisana horses. They are beautiful show horses. They have a white coat and strong legs. These horses are part of the Spanish riding school in Vienna, Austria. It is a very famous riding school. You can visit it and watch the Lipizzaner horses dance to music. Two. Heavy horses. They have big bones and big legs, and they weigh around one thousand three hundred kilograms. Draft horses are very tall, heavy, and strong. People use them for heavy work and in shows. Some important breeds of draft horses are. Clydesdale horses, Shire horses, and Percheron horses. Three. Ponies. They are small, short horses, and they weigh around four hundred kilograms. Ponies are gentle. They are good horses for young riders. They are strong. Clever animals. Some important breeds of ponies are Shetland ponies, Welsh ponies, and Dartmoor ponies. Horses at work. Today, cars, buses, trains, and airplanes take people everywhere. But horses are still part of our lives. We ride horses for fun and sport. We watch them perform at the circus. People go to the horse races and watch their favorite horse. Cowboys ride bucking broncos at rodeos in the United States. Policemen and police women ride horses in big cities like New York City. Cowboys in North American ranches ride quarter horses when they work with cattle. A ride in a horse and carriage is a big tourist attraction in some towns and cities. In poor countries, people use horses to work on farms and to travel. In some North European countries, horses and ponies pull sleighs. In the snow. Chapter Seven. My last home. Christmas and New Year's Eve are happy times for some people, but not for cab drivers and their horses. During that time, we work hard 
and stay out late. Often we must wait for hours in the rain or snow while people are at parties. On New Year's Eve, Jerry and I take two gentlemen to a party in a big house. Come back for us at eleven o'clock and don't be late, says one of the gentlemen. At eleven o'clock, we are in front of the big house, but the gentlemen are not there. It is a very cold night, and it is snowing. The church bell says it's midnight, says Jerry, but the gentlemen are not here. We continue to wait in the cold. At a quarter past one, the door of the big house opens, and the two gentlemen come out. They do not say a word to Jerry, and we take them home. When we get home, Jerry cannot speak, and he coughs a lot. He dries me and puts a warm blanket on my back. The next morning, Harry comes to give me oats and water. He pats my neck gently and says, "My father is very ill. He can't drive his cab any more. He must find another job. We must sell you to another cab driver. I'm very sorry, dear old friend." Dolly comes and kisses me. Then she starts crying. Goodbye, old friend. <laughs> I am very sad to leave Jerry and his family. My new master is Nicholas Skinner. He has black eyes and black hair, and a loud voice. He drives an old cab in a bad part of London. He often whips my back and my head. He is a cruel master, but I always do my best. I eat little and work twelve hours a day, seven days a week. There is no time to rest or to talk to other horses. My life is very unhappy. One morning, we go to the railway station and pick up a lady, a man, a young girl, and a little boy. They have a lot of heavy luggage. Skinner puts all the luggage in the cab. The young girl comes and looks at me. Father, she says, "This poor horse can't take us and all our luggage. He is weak and thin." Please come and look at him. What nonsense! Says the man. Get in the cab at once, and be quiet. I start to pull the heavy cab to Ludgate Hill. Then I try to climb the hill, but I feel weak. Suddenly, I fall to the ground. I try to get up, but I cannot. Oh, the poor horse! cries the young girl. We are cruel. A young man throws some cold water on my head, and I slowly get up. Skinner takes me back to the stables and says, "You're working very hard. Rest for a week, and then I must sell you at the horse fair. You're not a good horse for my cab." The horses at the fair are old and tired, and the people are not rich gentlemen; they are farmers. A farmer and his grandson stop in front of me. Look at this horse, William," says the farmer. "He is tired and thin, but he is handsome. He comes from a good family. Look at his neck and ears." The young boy. Pats my face, and I put my nose in his hand. Look, grandfather, he likes me," says William. "Do you like him?" asks the grandfather. "Yes, I like him a lot," says the young boy happily.
The grandfather looks at my teeth and my legs. Well, I'm buying him for you, William, says the grandfather. You must look after him. You must feed him and groom him every day. You can make him feel better. He is your responsibility. Oh, thank you, grandfather, says William, kissing him. I promise to look after him. William and Mr. Turner take me to their stables. I have a big, clean stall with lots of oats and fresh water. There is a small meadow outside where I can eat grass and enjoy the sun. Young William is a perfect master. Now you must rest, Beauty," says William. "Soon you can run in the meadow with the other horses." Mister Turner works on the farm, and sometimes he comes to see me. He looks at my legs and my teeth. Then he talks to me and gives me some sugar. Black Beauty is feeling better," says Mister Turner to William. His legs and knees are strong now. You're doing a good job with this horse. William smiles and says, "Thank you, Grandfather. I love Black Beauty." I do too," says Mister Turner. He's a wonderful horse. The Bloomfield sisters are friends of Mister Turner, and they are looking for a good horse. Black Beauty is feeling fine now," says Mr. Turner. "Let's take him to the Bloomfield Sisters and see what they say." "Yes, Grandfather," says William. "What a good idea!" One summer day, William and Mr. Turner take me to visit their friends. Ellen Bloomfield and her two sisters are happy when they see me. This horse has a good face, and he's very handsome," says Ellen. "I like him. Can I try him for a week?" "Yes, of course," says Mister Turner happily. A stable boy takes me to a big stable and starts grooming me. Every morning he comes to my stall and pats me and talks to me. "Good morning, Beauty." He says, "What a lovely day! You can go to the meadow today." He grooms me and gives me an apple. Then he takes me to the meadow. I like the tall trees and the beautiful flowers. I feel better every day. This is the same star Black Beauty has," says the young man. Looking at the white star on my face, and this is the same white foot too. He looks at my back, and sees a little white spot. Oh, this is Black Beauty! He cries. Black Beauty, do you remember me? I'm Joe Green. The stable boy at Mister Gordon's. I put my nose in his hand. Yes, it is Joe Green. He is very happy and tells the Bloomfield sisters about me. They are happy too, and they want to keep me for ever. Now I am part of the Bloomfield family. Ellen rides me almost every day. And I am her favorite horse. Sometimes I take her sisters to town in the carriage. My good friends, Mister Turner and William, often come to visit me. I am finally happy in this wonderful home, because everyone loves me, and I love them. Listening activity. Ellen and Mr. Turner meet at the baker's. Ellen is buying biscuits and a chocolate cake. 
Hello, Mr. Turner. It's good to see you. Hello, Alan. Nice to see you too. Are you looking for a good horse? Yes, I'm looking for a gentle horse. I have a wonderful horse for you. His name is Black Beauty, and he's five years old. He's very gentle, and he's perfect for a lady. When can I see him? I can bring him to your house next week on Tuesday. That's good. Come in the morning before lunch. Where do you live? I live in the big white house near the river. How much does the horse cost? I can sell him to you for eighteen pounds.